Welcome back to Let's Play AM2R. At this point, we've got, we've been everywhere, effectively. We've gotten pretty much everything that we're going to be getting. We've gotten every power-up that we can have. I think only one of those can be on at a time. Uh, um every exploration based power up and we've unlocked pretty much everything we're going to unlock which means today is collectathon day i'm gonna run forward very briefly you just get wrecked by everything because it's what i do But there are a couple items um, here, and there's a couple items just ahead of us that I'm going to grab real quick, and then we can go back to Collect-a-Thon. Oh, I killed something. There it is, Speed Booster Block. Okay, so this is where this game has the Speed Ball in it and not some weird Super Metroid version of Mach Ball. Um, you can do that. The controls for the Speed Booster and the Shine Spark work just like they did in Super Metroid, which is just how they did in most any other Metroid game. And they added the additional things that I think Fusion added? To it, where like if you're shine sparking sideways into a slope, you start running and then you can again get together your shine spark. I'm not sure if a speed ball was in fusion or zero mission. I've already mentioned um, previously that I'm not a huge fan of fusion, and I have played the game through but I simply don't have the wealth of knowledge about Fusion that I have of um, a, couple, a number of other Metroid games. Because I've only played it like once or twice. But the speedball is just, um, you do that, you dock, and you're morph. And then you can jump, and you can boost just like any other time. So, cool beans. Hey, remember this? We went down here once. All right, guy, you just keep being you. I like how you can't hit them at all until they come out. Oh, and gravity suit? Uh, lava doesn't hurt. Oh. And at least for the moment, I'm gonna hit the end of this room here, and that's gonna be as far as we go for now. There are those two items hidden along the way. Um, from here, it's time for a collectathon. So a lot of this is probably going to be edited out, obviously. So um, I'll see everybody when I find something. Oh, I'll point out this real quick, because a number of people pointed it out to me. Uh, the trouble I had with this one uh, came from a misunderstanding of how the mechanics in this game work compared to what I'm familiar with. Which, what I'm familiar with, by and large, is Super Metroid, if the probably 10 playthroughs of Super Metroid on this channel aren't any indication. But this is as actually as simple as that. And it, that works because in this game, the super missile, when it explodes, it has an explosion radius that's quite large. And as long as that radius hits that block, you're good. In Super Metroid, you had to hit that block directly. 
No ifs, ands, or buts about it. If the missile didn't hit it, you didn't get it. Oh, and also, along as I'm here, I'll point out that, yes, you could die in this explosion. Um, it was not a... maybe I... was... maybe I led everyone to believe that, but the, the entire explosion sequence, escape sequence, was not completely scripted. The meter was set to catch up to your progress, but it still advanced on its own, and you could still die to it if you didn't hustle. It was also pointed out to me that these things, for as annoying as they are, can be killed with a missile. And then they don't split into the two tiny little things that chase you down. Of course, that's kind of moot now when I can just do that. Okay, so here's an interesting one. Remember this door? I don't know if I actually showed this door. But it's up here, and there's nothing we can do in it. Or there was nothing we could do in it at the time. You see, you come in here, and... Power bomb locks. Oh, well, we didn't have the power bomb when, bomb when we came here before. We didn't get that until we were down there. And speed booster blocks. Now, there's clearly nowhere large enough to build up a speed boost, except here. So, our fun gets to be... I'm pretty sure that is the... Because I know Fusion, and I think Zero Mission, had some pretty crazy speed boost tracks you had to do. This is the craziest thing in this game. And honestly, I'm surprised that wasn't that bad. That was actually reasonably enjoyable, all things considered. Okay, so this room... There were blocks up here. What are these? Super missile? And then there's this room. Now, we came in here before, and there was nothing we could do in here, because... Great or Thing that's not doing. Can power bomb, power bomb a lot of stuff away. But that doesn't really help. Except for this. See, once we triggered the thing down here in the distribution center, these now have appeared in a couple places up here. Now, I don't think... Can regular missiles move this thing? Yes. And our final reward is a power bomb tank. That was an interesting puzzle. An interesting use of the mechanics built into the game. A little outside the box thinking, but not too outside. Okay, so secret room here. Collapsible blocks. If you really wanted to traverse this earlier, you could, but... Uh... It's just a missile tank. And come back to it with the screw attack. Or the space jump. Other room here. Got these blocks. These are also collapsible. I was informed. That the spider ball. will not break these crumble blocks, and that's probably how you were supposed to do this. I don't think I ever did that. Uh, 
I'm pretty sure the first time I came in here I bomb jumped them. There's a couple fun bits over here. One of which comes from that, which has now been enabled. Let's see, let's get up there. Because now we should be able to slowly get this thing down. Get in the hole, dude. Open up gray door for us. Okay, this is another tricky one if memory serves. as tricky as I remember. Yep, just making sure. Yeah, not as tricky as I remember. There was, uh, I'm sure it's, I'm sure the one I'm thinking of we'll see eventually. But we're not actually done in here because there's still more to go. And maybe what I'm thinking of is what's down here. Oh, uh, once you get the gravity suit, you can walk in this stuff, too. Okay, we got a missile. That was easy. Now to get that missile, we're gonna need to speed boost. Up from the room below. Which shouldn't be too horrible. I think there's plenty of room down here. matter of figuring out where the hole is. There it is. So we want to be standing on this block. Okay, it looks like we can build up speed here. And go get us our missile. And I think that's everything for this area.
Now in the original Metroid 2, when you came out here where your ship was, of course with as many movement abilities as you, ha as you have in this game, you could scale these cliffs pretty early on. In Metroid 2, however, they put a hurt ceiling up here. It was effectively an, a space of air. You could see, like, the a particle field that if you entered, you got hurt. So you couldn't go very high, or it just hurt. This game still sort of does that, but you have to hit, like, the active top of the screen. But more importantly, they let you come up here. There's no real benefit to coming up here, though. You do get to come over here and see some interesting crystal structure that you can't do anything to. It clearly goes down somewhere, but that's all we got. Hey, remember this room? We fought that guy here. And we could come up here and get something, but there was a power bomb door here. And oh, hey, a power bomb. And our final item should probably be in here somewhere. Specifically, there's another one of these orbs. This is going to be the most annoy annoying orb thing in the game. Purely because you're going to shoot, like, bomb it out a door more often than not. Oh, thank you. Now, what did that open? I may have shown before those were bombable, and there's a secret door over here. And this is a test of how many power-ups do you have. There's no way to get past that without speed boosting. So we're going to have us another speed booster day! I could have sworn. Let's try that again. Also, apologies if I sound a little nasally. Oh, hi there. I'm still sick. Really? Wait, would that even work? No, because there's a wall here. I've got to jump up and go horizontally into that. There we go. Now this is nice because this is the other one I was the other speed booster puzzle I was thinking of. Um, this one is nice though because they give you this area in the middle to get your speed boost back. So they don't force you to carry your speed boost through this entire room. Now figuring out this one is gonna be fun times.
How did I do this initially? How did I do this? It's all within that morph ball space, so you can barely tell what you're doing. But I'll try to explain what I'm attempting. There we go. So you may have been able to tell from the sound effects, but um, effectively I ran over here, morphed, rolled down here still with my charge, and then once I get it, got into this space, I did a horizontal dash. That got me to hit this. You can't do the dash over here, because you just plow through here and hit the ceiling here, and that ends you. But hitting this got me my dash back, so then I was, again, just running, so to say, until I got here, at which point I did the dash again sideways, which got hit, hit this, which then got me running again over those. And that should do it. Dang it. Yay! And that should be the final item, well, all but the final item in the game. So I guess I'll see everybody back. At the... at progress. And that is 99%. There's still one more item, but it's ahead of us right now. And 14 Metroids remain. There was a large surge of extra Metroids that were down in the distribution center, so 14 brings us back to a slightly more reasonable number. I will say at this point, the ending of this game is going to be very similar to Metroid 2. You may notice 14 is much larger than how many there would be in the original Metroid 2, but there aren't actually more Metroids. I guess you could say they're just counted differently. So until next time, everyone, when we move on to the end of the game.